A, a, a United States U-2 spy plane flying over Cuba photographed medium-range missile sites under construction. We've obtained many photographs of these sites, and we feel that they pose a serious threat to the security of our nation. Mr. President. Mr. President. Eric. Have you talked to the Soviets about the situation, sir? Yes, I have been in close conference with the Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev, <coughs> and I have discussed this with him. He has stated that if the United States continues to follow its actions, the Soviet Union would defend their rights by using force to get the missiles to Cuba. However, since that time, he has decided to stop the drift toward war and agreed to remove the missile if the United States does not invade Cuba. Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President, Mike. Mr. President, what do you mean if we promise not to invade Cuba? I have alerted the armed forces to stand by for an invasion of Cuba if we should become involved in a war. An invasion of Cuba would secure the island from the communist forces and make the island safe in a war. Next. Mr. President. Clark. Do you think there will be a nuclear war? I would rather not comment on that, but I will say that if Soviet ships do not turn around, they will be fired upon. And if war should break out, I will stop at nothing to defend the security. Recap the President's speech. Cuba has asked the Soviets for military aid, and the Soviets have responded by building missile bases in Cuba and shipping missiles there. President Kennedy, in reaction to this threat, has ordered a naval blockade of Cuba. It now appears that we are on the brink of war with the Soviet Union. Now we will go to our roving reporter for the public reaction to the president. Okay, I have here with me Captain E.H. Whiting at the naval base in Jacksonville, Florida. How you doing? Hi. Captain, how did you become involved in the situation? Well, I was in the naval reserves in Gallatin Bay, and they pulled me on active duty once the crisis started. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, you feel that you were sort of roped in by the government? Yeah, they roped me in a way. <laughs> what was your job aboard? I was the, I'm the head radar officer, and my job is to make sure that everyone gets their job done. And if there, anything happens, the radar is fixed. And if we fight any Russian ships, we let the captain know, town general quarter. So, basically, was your job to find the Russian, to watch out for Russian ships and stuff? Yeah, that was it. Well, where were you exactly stationed? on the destroyer escort the USS Wren. How close did you ever come to the Russians? Eight miles was the closest we came to the came. So actually you never were any uh, fired upon or never? No, but we were ready. We had our guns loaded. And we were face to face a couple of times. Do, do you know exactly how many ships the Russians had? Oh, at least one destroyer, a frigate. Somewhere we didn't know where they were. They were there. Uh, when you faced the Russians, how was the morale on your ship? Was it down or morale was really good. We were all ready to do what we had to do. If the Russians didn't turn around. We would have blown them out of the water. Were the was there ever some tension, like some periods in time where the crew didn't well, feel like they were doing the right thing? When we were at battle station, everyone was nervous because we didn't know whether we were going to be going to war or not. What were your feelings about the situation? Well, I felt we were doing exactly what we had to do. There was no other course of action to take. Were you, were you confident that the United States was prepared for the situation? Well, yes, we were, we were prepared. We had about 5,000 Marines stationed in Jacksonville, Florida, and they were ready to invade Cuba if the Russians didn't turn around. Were you ever worried that you might start a war or anything with the Russians if you had to fire upon them, the ships? Well, we were worried about that. But at the time, we really didn't think about that. We would think about what was happening to them. But that was it. What do you think uh, about Kennedy's policies towards the Russians? I think he's doing exactly what he has to do. There's no other course of action for him to take. And do you feel Castro was a major cause for this incident, or Khrushchev, or how do you feel about both? Well, I think Castro and Khrushchev have been giving us a hell of a time. In Cuba, Castro shut down our, our water supply at the naval base, and he closed, shut down the phone lines. No one was allowed in or out of the base. And a couple of Marines snuck off the base and were spotted by a, a Cuban patrol and were shot on sight. Uh, how did the Navy make, get some water to the... We brought in some special ships that generated water. Do you feel Khrushchev did the thing? Do you think Khrushchev um, was a major cause of the situation by sending the missiles? I think he I think because he sent it, he sent aid to, to Cuba that, that caused a big problem there. You mentioned
before about the conditions on the um, on the naval base, but what were the, some of the conditions like in Cuba itself? Well, the Cubans wanted us out. They were they gave us hell. We stuck our head off the base. They really probably shot it off. And were you ever in a situation like the two Marines that you mentioned before leaving the base? No. What was it like on the ship during the crisis? We were on a modified general quarters. Everyone stood watch. Guns were manned all day. And we had battle dress, which is a helmet, life jacket. So if we ever had to see action, we would have been ready. Uh, so in other words, your, your crew and the crew on the ship and everything was on war maneuvers in like wartime conditions? Yeah, exactly what we were doing. Were you forced to carry a lot of ammunition or just enough to get you through? We carried a full load of ammunition the whole time. About 30 ammunition rooms the size of the classroom, and they were full. What other types of armaments did your ship have? Five five-inch guns, two in the front and three in the back, torpedo tubes, and 50 caliber machine guns. Were you, uh, what kind of armaments did it have against airstrikes or anything that didn't secure it? 50 caliber machine guns. Basically, what were your orders aboard ship? Our orders were if the Russians didn't turn around at a certain point, which like Admiral said was what this meant, blow them out of the water. So, in other words, it was the Admiral's choice whether or not to blow them out of the water. It was the Admiral's orders to blow them out of the water. Thank you, Captain. Your interview has been quite informative to our viewers. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Now we will go to the man on the street, Mike Over. The man on the street interview. Uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, what did you think of the president's speech last night? I thought it was very good. He has a lot of good policies. He's handled the situation very well. Uh, do you think that we are doing the right thing in Cuba? Yes, I do, because if we don't stop the Russians in Cuba, they could move to other countries. Uh, how do you feel about the Russians sending missiles to Cuba? I think it's very wrong, because with weapons so close, it causes a good threat of war. Uh, so you think there is a current threat of war right now? Yes, I do, because if we don't stop the Russians there, they can take over other countries and threaten us. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank Have you. a nice day. Okay. Today's attention, the Russians got smart and went home. The crisis is over. But the United States military will stay on alert in case they ever come back. Due to circumstances, Beyond my control, I cannot physically be here today. <laughs> just wait, just wait. No, no, we don't need that fade. No, because I never start this. No, wait, should I start after I hear that? Due to circumstances, beyond my control, I cannot physically be here today, but thanks to modern technology, I can still participate in this debate. We believe the legal age for purchasing and consuming alcohol should be 18 for all people in the United States nationwide. There are several reasons we hold this belief. First, we feel that if males are legally required to register for the draft at age 18 and can risk their lives for our country, they should be mature enough to make their own decisions on drinking. Secondly, at 18, people are considered legal adults, are independent of their parents' control, and can vote for government officials in an election. Therefore, we feel since the United States has given them these rights, they should also be given the right to make their own decisions on drinking. Third, many people argue that at 18, many people are still in high school and have many friends who are underclassmen that are under age 18. So they say the age should be raised to 21 to get alcohol out of the high schools. But at age 21, many people are still in college. Once the nationwide age is raised to 21, people will argue to get alcohol out of college and raise the age to 25. If that is done, People will argue to get alcohol out of the workplace. Where will it stop when the drinking age is finally 65?
and people can only drink after retiring and sitting at home? Ford, the sale of alcohol <coughs> generates an enormous amount of taxes for the government. The fewer people who are eligible to purchase alcohol, the less alcohol will be purchased, and as a result, less taxes will be generated for the federal government. A final point is that if alcohol is not purchased legally, it can always be obtained illegally through the use of fake IDs, older friends, parents, or at parties. This can result in drinking in cars due to a lack of a better controlled environment to drink at, such as a bar, which will usually prohibit sales to people who are overly intoxicated. As a result, people will drink anyway in dangerous situations. In conclusion, because 18 is the legal age to vote, register for the draft, and be independent of your parents' control, we feel the legal age for purchasing and consuming alcohol should also be 18. If it is raised to 21, federal tax dollars will be gener fewer tax dollars will be ge generated. Illegal drinking <laughs> will increase, and eventually there will be a call for an even higher drinking age. Where will it stop? Thank you, and good night. That's a good question, Karen. But as I said in my debate, um, a 21-year-old may be more responsible than an 18-year-old. But don't you feel that a 25-year-old is more responsible than a 21-year-old? And a 65-year-old person is more responsible than a 25-year-old person. Where is it going to stop? Are you going to keep raising the ages? until no one can uh, legally drink. Payne observed, reflected, and then wrote. These are the times that try men's souls. The summer soldier and the sunshine patriot will, in this crisis, shrink from... MJT, Channel 52 Trenton, viewer and taxpayer supported public television. Major funding for New Jersey Bowl is provided by the New Jersey Department of Higher Education. Additional funding is provided by the John Ben Snow Memorial Trust. And by Jersey Central Power and Light Company. Dependable service now and in the future. Today, the Spartans of Madison Central High School face the Colonials of Freehold High School on New Jersey Bowl. A presentation of Rutgers, the State University of New Jersey, and the New Jersey Department of Higher Education in support of higher education in New Jersey. Now your host for New Jersey Bowl, Todd Hunt. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to the New Jersey Bowl. We've got two teams just raring to go here, so we'd like to get right to them and meet them. First, from Freehold High School. Hi, I'm Kathy O'Brien, and I'm a member of the French Honor Society. Hi, I'm Joe Stevens. I'm, I'm a senior at Freehold Borough High School. I'm currently playing soccer. Hi, I'm Elaine Jager, and I'm a senior at Freehold Borough. I'm interested in horseback riding and soccer. Hello, I'm Karen Salkis, and I'm a National Merit Scholarship semifinalist. That's Freehold High School. <laughs> now let's say hello to the contestants from Madison Central High School. Hi, I'm Carl Faella, and I'm a junior, and I graduated with honors from Middlesex County Arts High School. Hi, I'm Karen Evanowskis. I'm a junior, and I graduated with honors from Middlesex County Arts High School. Hello, I'm Roger Maranzoli. I'm the Vice President of the Student Council. Hello, I'm Paul Brennan. I'm a senior at Madison Central, and I play soccer. That's Madison Central High School. 
Today we're playing for fun and a chance to come back as we eliminate teams and eventually a chance at $1,000 scholarships in our championship game. Those scholarships provided through the sponsorship of Jersey Central Power and Light Company. Now let's review the rules very briefly. During this first round, first of four, I'll ask toss-up questions. Someone must signal, wait to be recognized. If the answer is correct, it's 10 points and a chance at a bonus question worth more. If the answer is incorrect, the question goes over to the other team. Someone must signal and wait to be recognized. Those are the rules. Here are the questions. Let's start with the toss-up. Ezra Pound once complained that she converted imagism into amygism, a cigar-smoking, tough-talking descendant of an old and distinguished New England family. She published such poetic works as Sword Blades and Poppy Seed and Can Grandy's Castle. What's her full name? Amy and Amy, somebody. It's Amy Lowell. Okay, let's try another toss-up and get the game rolling. They started in 776 BC. The Emperor Theodosius banned them in 394 AD. Baron de Coubertin started them up again in 1896. They returned to the United States in 1984. <laughs> Madison Central, Paul. The Olympic Games. The Olympic Games, that's correct. <laughs> so Madison Central has our first bonus opportunity. It's worth 25 points. Few Renaissance artists went far or ate well without a patron. One of the greatest painters of the time doubled as a map maker for Cesar Borgia and as a festival planner for the Duke of Milan. For 25 points, who was he? Your answer. Lorenzo Ghiberti? No, it was Leonardo da Vinci. Close, but no points there. I have a 30-point bonus waiting, and here's our audio toss-up. So listen, when this artist wrote the song you are about to hear, he used his real name, John Deutschendorf. Since then, he has gained more popularity with his stage name. What is it? Listen up. Freehold, Karen. John Denver. John Denver is correct. Okay, guitar work seemed to be the clue there. Freehold, you have a 30-point bonus opportunity. Soap operas number among the longest-running and most successful shows on television. For 10 points apiece, which soap has been set since 1951 in Henderson, USA? Your answer, please. General Hospital? No, it's Search for Tomorrow. How about the one set since 1956 in Oakdale, USA? Um. One Life to Live? No, as the world turns. <laughs> Since 1965, it has been set in Salem, USA. <laughs> Any idea? All My Children? No, this one's Days of Our Lives. <laughs> well, it, obviously none of you have been malingering and staying home from school to watch soap operas, and that's all to the good. So let's, no points there, but let's try another toss-up for either team. <laughs> it has many arms, but no legs. Among its arms are the Orion, Sagittarius, and Perseus. It is about 600 quadrillion miles in diameter. What is this stellar attraction? <laughs> Madison Central, Roger. The Orion Nebula? No, I'm sorry. Can someone on Freehold take it? Gotcha. Quickly. <laughs> oh, I'll take it because there's a signal ending our first round. It's the Milky Way Galaxy. Includes all those things we talked about. Okay, our score after this first round is tied. Freehold 10, Madison Central 10. Now we'd like to go to the studio audience and meet a few of the people who helped prepare our contestants for this week's match. First of all, from Freehold High School, let's say hello to advisor Barry Walker and alternate contestant Howard Benowitz. And from Madison High School, Madison Central, we have advisor Neil Wyman, principal Peter Delaney, advisor Ethel Newman, and alternate Manher Joshi. As you know, each week at this time in the show, we like to find out about New Jersey's colleges and universities. So let's hear about two more of them. I chose the College of St. Elizabeth's because it offered me what I needed, a chance to broaden my intellectual horizons and to mingle with students and faculty. The College of St. Elizabeth is a unique blend of old and new. Founded in 1899, the College of St. Elizabeth is a modern Catholic institution, especially for today's woman. The college provides a solid liberal arts foundation, along with extensive opportunities for professional training. 
our location in a rapidly expanding area for corporate headquarters provides an excellent resource for internship programs offered by many of our 17 majors. You also get the chance to grow at a personal level in small challenging classes, through richly varied on-campus activities, through the development of leadership skills, and through a greater understanding of yourself and of those around you. Take a good look at us. At the College of St. Elizabeth, we recognize you and your goals as a woman in today's world. Deirdre, Deirdre, is that how you say it? I've never met anyone with that name before. That's okay, I've never been to a college named Glassboro before. A distinctive person for a distinctive college, that's perfect. At Glassboro, names are much more important than numbers. This is a place where people make the difference. Soon you'll be feeling right at home. You'll make new friends and begin a new lifestyle to blend in with your academic career. I came to Glassboro to study communication. A good choice. Glassboro's communication program is among the top 25 largest in the country. There are 30 majors at Glassboro, including an outstanding program in computer science and an excellent school of business administration. I'll bet math and computer science grads are getting good industry jobs, right? That's right. 100% placement with excellent starting salaries besides. Soon I'll take my skills out into the job market. I only hope I can succeed. Oh, you'll succeed. You're a Glassboro person now. And Glassboro people make all the difference. For more information on educational opportunities at New Jersey colleges and universities, call toll-free 1-800-792-8355. Or, for financial aid information, 1-800-792-8670. College in New Jersey. It can work for you. Once again, our sco score is Freehold, Freehold 10, Madison Central 10. I'll get my tongue straightened out, and we'll be back for the challenge rounds after this. You remember me? Mm-hmm. You're back, huh? Bean Crosby and Francis Farmer star in Rhythm on the Range, featuring the first film appearance of Martha Ray. I always heard the Westerners were chivalrous. Was that just a rumor? Look, lady, I'm a cattleman. A cattleman takes care of cattle. <laughs> lady, don't your face ever do nothing but pucker? The only time it looks like a face is when I pucker. <laughs> movies, movies, movies brings you Rhythm on the Range, Sunday at 7. It's time for our challenge rounds. First, we'd like to hear about Madison Central High School, though. So let's go to our captain, Roger. Madison Central High School is a comprehensive four-year secondary school located in the town of Oldbridge in Middlesex County. For 23 years, Madison Central has served the educational needs of the young people of Oldbridge. Its broad range of course offerings is planned to meet the varied needs of today's student body. During a student's four years in school, it is possible to participate and learn in classrooms, labs, and shops, to discover the great themes of literature, the secrets of science, and the beauty of art. Extracurriculars are an integral part of life in Madison Central. Pride has been developed over the years as students have successfully participated in many and varied activities. Girls and boys athletic and scholastic teams have consistently done well and have brought honor and respect to their school. For these and many other reasons, we are proud to say that we are the Madison Central Spartans. Thank you. Now let's see if you can bring pride and honor to your school with our devilishly difficult spelling questions. You chose them at random before the show. Now you'll meet your fates. Paul, let's start with you. A device which indicates speed of rotation for such things as cars is a tachometer. Spell tachometer. T-A-C-H-O-M-E-T-E-R. That's correct for 10 points. <laughs> now we go to Roger. Roger, a trapezium is a four-sided figure which has no two sides parallel. Spell trapezium. Trapezium. T-R-A. P-E-Z-I-U-M. That's correct for 10. <laughs> Karen, clay, dough, and pure gold will not return to their original shape if pressure is applied to them. This classifies them as malleable. Spell malleable. M-A-L-L-U-A-B-L-E. No, it's M-A-L-L-E, malleable. Okay. Carl, here's your word. Uh, paparazzo is a news reporter or photographer who searches for a story that can be sensationalized. Spell paparazzo. 
P A P A R R A Z Z I. Only one R. Paparazzo. Two Z's, but only one R. So no points there. You got two out of your four spelling questions for 20 points. And now we go on to your three minute challenge round. Remember, it's all, tw all 10 point toss ups, no conferences. So let's get our hands on the signals. And remember, during the last 60 seconds, you'll see the countdown clock in the corner of the screen. Here we go. This syncophant of Dionysus of Syracuse was invited by the tyrant to assume the kingly role he so much envied. The poor fellow, however, didn't much enjoy his royal banquet because of an overhanging danger. Whom did Dionysus seat beneath a sword? Roger. Theseus. No, it was Damocles, the sword of Damocles. The Spanish call it the Mundial. Occurring every four years, it outshines the Olympics in terms of world TV audiences and media coverage. When played most recently in 1982, it took place in 17 stadiums throughout Spain. Italy won. What? Paul. The World Cup. The World Cup of soccer, that's correct. He wrote tales, many of them brought together into the masterwork of 14th century English literature. Who was he? Karen. Chaucer. Jeffrey Chaucer, that's correct for Tim. Okay, now put a map in your head and look at it while I read this question. New Jersey is located slightly above latitude 40 degrees north. Consider Paris, France, Istanbul, Turkey, or Venice, Italy. Which of them is on about the same latitude as New Jersey? Roger. Paris, France? No, it's Istanbul, Istanbul, Turkey. The lengthy, lengthy subtitle of a Shakespeare play is containing his treacherous plots against his brother Clarence, the pitiful murder of his innocent nephews, his tyrannical usurpation, with the whole course of his detested life and most deserved death. Which Shakespeare play is this? Okay, Roger. Richard the second? Richard the third, he was the detestable one. Sorry, no points. Among his recent poetical works are The Elephant Man and I, Prince Valium, and This Mind of Mine. Although his poems have won no prizes, they received national attention because of an event which occurred on March 30th, 1981. Who is the institutionalized author of these works? Carl. E. Cummings? No, John Hinckley. John Hinckley tried to shoot, did shoot the president. Bartolomeo di Francesco Cristofori seems to have invented it in the early 1700s. Elton John, Dudley Moore, and Alicia de la Roca. Carl. Piano. The piano, they are piano players. <laughs> Richard Brooks directed the film, and Robert Blake and Scott Wilson starred in this film, based on the original nonfiction bestseller, In Cold Blood. Who wrote the book? Carl. Truman Capote. Truman Capote is correct. We all know that the Earth is large and that light travels very fast. In one second, would light travel seven, 27, or 90 times around the Earth? Yes. Paul. 90? No, seven. 186,000 divided by 25,000 comes out to about seven. You've got 60 points in your challenge round. We'll see how Freehold does in their challenge round after this. Next on Wonderworks, Jen's Place. On a weekly schedule detailed below, which schedule has been arrived at with the consent of both parties? What both parties? Me and your mom. What if I don't like the arrangement? I'm running away from home. Classic, huh? Oh, you're kidding. Oh, how tacky. That's Tuesday at 8 here on New Jersey Network. Now we're ready for Freehold's challenge round, and we'll start that right after we hear about that high school from the captain, Elaine. Freehold High School, established in 1929, has been dedicated to the educational advancement of students in the Freehold area for over 50 years. For a small school, Freehold has a diverse curriculum. Its computer labs are used not only to familiarize the student with the use of computers, but to supplement the English department, the sciences, and the foreign language department. Freehold High School also has a wide variety of student activities. It has a championship soccer team and an aggressive football, basketball, and baseball teams. Freehold also stands behind its academic clubs. 
Consistently, Freehold High School has finished in the top 1% of science and math competitions in Monmouth County. Under the leadership of Freehold's principal, Charles Figg, the teachers stand as one, of, as one dedicated and caring faculty. The special rapport and varied curricula of Freehold High School create a dynamic learning atmosphere. Thank you. Now we'll see if you have a special rapport or spelling questions. Remember, you chose them. Now you take them. Karen, we'll start with you. An artificially produced singing voice that overlaps and extends above the range of the full voice is a falsetto. Spell falsetto. F-A-L-S-E-T-T-O. That's correct for 10. Okay, Elaine, centrifugal force proceeds or acts in a direction away from the center or axis. Spell centrifugal. C-E-N-T-R-I-F-U-G-A-L. That's correct, for ten. <laughs> Joseph, corporations are now using fitness programs to offset the occupational stresses and rigors that debilitate the employees. Spell debilitate. D-E-B-I-L-L. Only one L, I'm afraid. I'll stop you right there. Only one L in the middle of debilitate. Sorry. Kathleen, people who suffer from acrophobia are rarely seen standing atop the Empire State Building. Spell acrophobia. A-C-R-O-P-H-O-B-I-A. -O That's correct for 10. <laughs> okay, you got three out of four in your spelling round, and now come your toss-up question. So remember, hands on buzzers, no conferences. Here we go. In 1687, the Venetian Admiral Francesco Morosini made history in a tragic way. While he was driving the Turks from Greece, one of his artillery shells landed on a Turkish powder magazine in Athens and blew it up. The explosion ruined what architectural monument? <laughs> Kathleen. The Parthenon. The Parthenon, that's correct. <laughs> hey, listen to this list. Weavers, wall, crown, diamond, Square, granny, figure eight, slip. What one syllable word frequently follows all of these adjectives? Karen. Not. They are not, that's correct. <laughs> His first major work in our time was a collection of 15 stories, many of them dealing with the early life of Nick Adams, whose boyhood was to be a prototype of many of his later heroes, such as Jake Barnes, Frederick Henry, and Robert Jordan. Name this acclaimed American writer. Ernest Hemingway. Hemingway. Located on the Acre River, which flows into the Skagerrak, this capital city contains the Storting and monuments to the writers Bjornsson and Ibsen. In 1925, its name was changed from Christiana to what? Oslo, Norway, it's the capital of Norway. A gold strike at Rabbit Creek brought more than 30,000 people to the area. 14 years later, when the strike was over, they'd taken $100 million in gold from what Yukon Territory? It was the Klondike, Klondike. The press labeled it an epic court decision. Out of an obscure case came a reshaping of the powers of Congress and the president. In a 7-2 decision in early 1983, what did the Supreme Court declare to be an unconstitutional usurpation of power by Congress? Less than a minute remaining. Elaine, oh, I'm sorry, we have Karen. Prayer in schools? No, it was the legislative veto. No, no, for Congress. In 1907, an ocean liner demonstrated record-breaking speed, making the transatlantic run in only five days. It sank in 1915. Name the liner. Karen. Lusitania. Lusitania is correct for 10. In 1928, his ashes were buried in Poets' Corner, Westminster Abbey, and his heart was laid to rest beneath the Dorset soil he loved so dearly. Name this author of Far From the Madding Crowd. It was Thomas Hardy. Okay, ready, racing fans? When Mark Donahue won the 72 Indy 500, he set a race record for speed, averaging 163 and a half miles per hour. Within three minutes, 
I tried to set a record for reading that question. I couldn't get it out. We were looking for the length, length of that race. It was about three hours. So you ha also have 60 points in your challenge round. We have a tie game, 70 to 7, 70 to 70. We have to break that tie in our fourth and final round after this. When is a circus act truly special? When the performers all wear ice skates. When the performance is taped in Paris. And when the performers are all from the Soviet Union. From clowns to acrobats, you'll enjoy feats that are barely believable. New Jersey Network brings you the Moscow Circus on Ice, Saturday, January 26th at 7.30. Let's break that tie. It's 70 to 70, freehold against Madison Central. Somebody's got to win. So here's our fourth and final round. All 20-point toss-ups this round. Hands on signals. Here we go. The Mediterranean Sea is to its north. The Gulf of Aden to its south. What is this strategic body of water? <whistles> Madison Central, Roger. The Red Sea? The Red Sea is correct. <laughs> toss-up, he exposed the horrifying conditions he'd found in the meat packing industry. A freehold, Karen. Upton Sinclair Lewis. No, I'm sorry, I'll finish it. Madison Central, Carl. Upton Sinclair. Upton Sinclair. <laughs> Always getting those two confused, aren't we? Here's another toss-up for either team. The adrenocorticotropic hormone is an important secretion of the pituitary gland. What is that hormone's more commonly known? Madison Central, Roger. Adrenaline. No, I'm sorry. I'll complete the question for freehold. What's its more commonly known acronym? It's A-C-T-H. That's just a shortening of the long word I read for you. Okay, now we have a visual toss-up. So both sides, please look into your monitors. On the screen is a site of two temples commissioned by the pharaoh Ramses II in 1250 B.C. In the 60s, the temples were threatened with destruction. Name these ancient buildings or the modern monument that threatened their loss. Madison Central, Paul. The Aswan High Dam. Aswan High Dam. And they were, they were the Abu Simbel temp temples. 20 points. Here's another toss-up. Founded in 1935 by Bill Wilson and Dr. Bob Smith, it has a membership in excess of one million. What is this fellowship organization that helps people with a certain problem? <laughs> Madison Central, Carl. Alcoholics Anonymous? AA, Alcoholics Anonymous. <laughs> Henry Kissinger proclaimed it as the year of Europe, but European affairs were largely eclipsed by the Saturday Night Massacre the Senate Watergate hearings, and the Yom Kippur War. What year was this? Madison Central, Roger. 1974. I'm sorry, can someone on Freehold take it? Karen. 1973. 73 is the correct answer. <laughs> With nearly perfect performances in both compulsory and free skating, she won a gold medal in the 76 Olympics. Name this touring professional skater. Madison Central, Paul. Dorothy Hamill. Dorothy Hamill is correct. <laughs> the New Testament refers to it as the Lake of Gen Arset and the Sea of Tiberias. Neither name is used today for this 13-mile-long lake in northern Palestine. What name do we use today? <laughs> Madison Central Paul. The Dead Sea? No, I'm sorry. Can someone in Freehold take it? It's the Sea of Galilee. Galilee. This Brooklyn-born writer has centered his novels and short stories on the Jewish experience. Name this Pulitzer Prize-winning author of The Fixer. <laughs> Madison Central, Carl. Kazan? No, quickly, can someone in Freehold take it? Karen. Malamud? Bernard Malamud is correct. <laughs> First, there is duplication of chromosomes. Then comes segregation of the chromosomes. And finally, cell division. What biological process am I describing? Freehold, Joseph. Mitosis. Mitosis is correct. <laughs> Draw and five-card stud are types of poker. What popular card game is played in the contract and auction <laughs> forms? Madison Central Paul. Bridge. Bridge is correct. <laughs> Less than half a minute remaining. Nine thick logs of Peruvian balsa lashed together with hemp rope, and the Contiki raft was nearly ready to sail. Who was the Norwegian leader of the 1947 Freehold Karen? Thor Heyerdahl. Thor Heyerdahl is correct. For 25 years, Fidel Castro has ruled Cuba. 
whom did he overthrow in 1959? It was Fulgencio Batista. There's a signal. Our game is over. A good game. Freehold 150. Our winner, Madison Central High School 150. I'm Todd Hunt. I hope you'll be with us next week when Lakewood Prep meets John P. Stevens High School in the New Jersey Bowl. Major funding for New Jersey Bowl is provided by the New Jersey Department of Higher Education. Additional funding is provided by the John Ben Snow Memorial Trust. And by Jersey Central Power and Light Company. Dependable service now and in the future. I'm Todd Hunt, and I hope you watch the New Jersey Bowl Saturdays at 7 p.m. If you do, I bet you play along with the game. And so here's your team's 30-point bonus. Give three good reasons why you should become a member of New Jersey Network. Quickly, your answer. Yes, New Jersey Network is the only statewide public television network. That's part one. New Jersey Network produces more original programs than almost any other public TV station. And three, New Jersey Network is viewer-supported. You are the sponsors. So, you're a winner. Now get to the phone and give us a pledge. We'll be waiting to hear from you. Thank you. Send $40 or more.
to catch her when she get up and get her diploma. Sharon, I got to catch her when she get her diploma.
I would like to thank all the parents for their patience and their prayers, because as it is, the evening turned out fine. I'd also like to thank the custodial staff, members of our staff, and also members of the senior class, because from 5.30 on, we did a lot of hustling to set the gym. And I appreciate your cooperation, and I thank you, too, for your patience. At this particular time, I would like to introduce and present Ms. Kimberly Ann Kelly, President of the class of 1985, who will lead us in the salute to the flag. Would everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States. Maturing. 
Thinking back to my eighth grade graduation, I can recall my teachers telling us that we would be in for a great shock once we entered high school. After all, they said, in junior high, all the students knew each other, and the teachers made many of our decisions for us. However, in high school, we should expect to be thrown into a pool of unfriendly faces in classes where teachers cared little for their students. Entering these halls for the first time as a scared freshman, not much smaller than I am today, armed only with an unintelligible map of the building, my first quest was to find the infamous swimming pool in the basement of A building. However, after only a week in the school, half of which was spent in the guidance office rearranging my schedule, I began to become comfortable with my surroundings. I was happily surprised when, contrary to my eighth grade teacher's tales of horror, I discovered that the teachers and staff of Freehold High School care greatly about their students and are often willing to take the time to help any who ask. True, the teachers no longer made decisions for us, but thinking for oneself is a necessary process in growing up. Instead, they took the time to guide us into the individual directions which our lives will probably follow. I had also heard many rumors about the unfriendliness of the students and the poor quality of education at our school, all of which were related by people who have had no first-hand knowledge of Freehold High School. Anyone who attends the borough, or even visits for a short while, immediately dismisses these rumors as false. And all they see are friendly, outgoing students and an educational system which motivates the individual to achieve his or her potential. The class of 85 has matured together, beginning on that first day in September four long years ago until today, when we all sit waiting expectantly for our names to be called and our diplomas presented. From 7.40 in the morning until 2.12 in the afternoon, 183 times a year, excluding unused snow days and freshman orientation, for four consecutive years, we have been expected to spend our valuable teenage years in the buildings of Freehold High School. Some days, it may have seemed that this was just a waste of time. But looking back, many of us are already able to see the rewards which have been gained from our 4,782 hours and 24 minutes of high school education. Every second. Basic skills have been mastered, facts have been digested and stored for later referral, but more importantly, we have learned to think for ourselves and to realize that anything we want in life must be achieved by hard work and dedication. The class of 85 has gained much from Freehold High School, and now it is time to leave the safe familiarity of its friendly halls. Hopefully, our education has taught us self-sufficiency, for we are now about to enter the world as adults. Whether a graduate plans to attend college, enlist in the military, or start a career, no longer will there be someone to take him by the hand and guide him. A major purpose of our education was to prepare us for existence in society, and we are now about to be set free to live what we have learned. There are many opportunities awaiting the class of 85, because, as we will so often hear, we are the nation's future, and we hold the key to our own success. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the faculty of Freehold High School for caring about and educating this graduating class for four long years, our parents for their undying love and support during the trying times of high school, and finally, to the graduates themselves for working together to make these some of the most memorable and rewarding years of our lives. of the class of 1985. The class of 1985 has a most distinguished and excellent record, a record that will compare favorably with any high school in the state or nation. Of some 210 graduates, 119 or 57% of the class has been accepted to four-year colleges, nursing schools, two-year colleges, and other institutions of advanced learning. 20 are awarded the Schilling Key for very high academic achievement. This award is presented by the Freehold Regional High School Board of Education. There are many awards this class have earned. The administration and staff are most proud of their accomplishments. We have assembled here to, to honor and award diplomas. And it is only fitting that you, as parents and friends, 
of these graduates have the privilege of knowing the other awards these seniors have received. Members of this class have received scholarships or granted aid and other financial assistance representing an outlay of $180,253. Our graduates have not only these accomplishments, but they have participated in many aspects of school and community life. They have shown tremendous responsibility for bringing about a spirit of friendliness and cooperation to Frio High School. These and others, I feel, are most important accomplishments if we are truly interested in making our school, our community, and our nation a better place in which to live. While becoming full members of our society, I am sure they are well prepared and willing to accept their responsibility in a free society. The challenges that faces this class are great, and there are those among you who will be a part of the group that will provide national leadership to combat rampant inflation, energy shortages, threats of nuclear war, unemployment, and human injustice. You are the key to the future. As the next generation, and with perseverance and pride, you will help this nation reach its full potential. As you leave the halls of Freehold High School, continue to possess a free and open mind, and always remember that service is the price you pay for the space you occupy on Earth. I congratulate each member of the class of 18, uh, 1985. <laughs> I'm just going back in years to my days. <laughs> May your skies be filled with sunshine each day your whole life through. May efforts that you now put forth bring rich rewards to you. May, may each rainbow that you seek to find not ever be sought in vain. May each cherished goal you have in sight be yours to have and gain. May hopes and dreams that you possess one day come true for you. May God work always by your side and light the way for you. Congratulations. Good evening. Before I read the individual achievements of the class of 1985, I'd like to introduce to you, the people who are on your left, uh, department supervisors in our school. Mrs. Lily Hendry, department supervisor for guidance. Mrs. Eileen Crawford, department supervisor for business education. Mr. Robert Leonard, department supervisor for English. Mr. Gary Wojcik, department supervisor for industrial education. Behind me, Mr. Paul Ciotti, the, um, all, the entire member of the uh, music department. <laughs> Mrs. Marilyn Lamb, who is representing the physical education department. <laughs> Mr. William Lewis, department supervisor of uh, social studies. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Marlene Caruso, the supervisor for the medical arts, the medical science uh, program in our school. Also behind the scenes, I need to mention a couple of names. Uh, Mr. Caldine Wilson, our athletic director, who is helping behind the scenes. The senior class advisor who is in charge and in, who has put together this entire program himself just about single-handedly, Mr. Wayne McChesney. And finally, a gentleman who has been here at every important event of this school, both athletic and academic, Mr. Raymond Halloway. At this time, it gives me a great deal of pleasure to read to you the individual accomplishments of the class of 1985. As I call your name, please stand and remain standing until I read the entire list. Patrick Abbott. Patrick will be attending the University of South Carolina. Richard, Richard Aronson. Richard uh, will be attending Kutztown University in the fall. Regis Armstead. Regis will be attending Middlesex Community College. Natalie Augustin. Natalie has been awarded the Senior Drama Award, award uh, the John Philip Sousa Band Award, and will be attending the University of South Carolina in the fall. Michael Avento. Michael has been awarded the Musical Drama Award and will be attending the Brookdale Community College. 
Bruce Ball. Bruce will be attending Trenton State College. Howard Benowitz. Howard Benowitz is, uh, has received the Shield and Key Award, is the current president of the National Honor Society from 1985, was also awarded Freehold High School Student of the Year. He received the Garden State Distinguished Scholarship Award for $2,000 and the Parent Teachers Association Scholarship for $200. He's going to be attending Rutgers University in the fall. Jack Bernstein. Glassboro State College. Barbara Blecker, Hofstra University. Stephen Bloom, Ramapo College. Robert Bobkowski, Penn State. Bonnie Borden, Syracuse University. Jill Braun, Loyola College in Baltimore, Maryland. Brian Brody, Spring uh, Garden College. He has also received the Pell Grant for $4,800. Sandra Bonner was, out, was awarded the Outstanding Achievement in the Resource Math uh, from the Resource uh, Department. Joanne Buck. Joanne Buck received the Music Department Award, the Musical Drama Award, uh, the National School Choir Award, and will be attending Livingston College in the fall. Angela Bukowi is a member of the National Honor Society. She also received the New Jersey uh, Garden State Distinguished Scholarship uh, Award. She will be attending the University of Texas in Austin, Texas in the fall. <laughs> Maureen Burdett was also awarded the Shield and Key, was also awarded the Drama Award, has received the Garden State Distinguished Scholarship Award for $10,000, the Presidential Scholarship for Li from Loyola College for $1,700, and we'll be attending Loyola College in Baltimore in the fall. Donna Caliendo, Brookdale Community College. Thomas Cardulo, University of Rhode Island. Joanne Carlson, the Pell School of Art. Elizabeth Cartanuto received a Union 1262 grant for $1,000 and will be attending the University of Tampa in the fall. Edward Carpenter will be attending Stockton State College. Christine, Christine Cipriano was awarded the Shield and Key, is a member of our National Honor Society. She also received the Foreign Language Award. Uh, she also was awarded the Lehigh Trustee Scholarship for $7,750 and will be attending Lehigh University in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania in the fall. <laughs> Buffy Clemenko. Buffy has, earned, Buffy has earned the Educational Opportunity Fund for a total of $28,000. We'll be attending jo Georgian Court College. Randy Flamenco. Randy will be attending Brookdale Community College. Linda Colleen will be attending the Wilma Boyd Travel School in the fall. Marlene Conover. Marlena Conover will be attending the Stewart Business School, and she also received the Edna Skivington Award for $100. Susan Corcoran. Susan Corcoran will be attending the University of Delaware in the fall. Perry Craver. Perry has been awarded the Shield and Key, is a member of our National Honor Society, and will, has been accepted to North Carolina State University. Edward Checkeye. Edward has received the uh, Industrial Education Department Award and will be attending Brookdale in the fall. Kevin Daly. Kevin will be attending East Stroudsburg University. Louise DeSaro. Louise is a member of our National Honor Society, was also selected by the Social Studies Department to receive the Department Award, also the Folio Award. She also is a recipient of the AAAA Scholarship for $1,000. The Dickinson Scholarship for $6,400 will be attending, attending Dickinson College in Carlisle, Pennsylvania in the fall. Marshall Davis. Marshall Davis was awarded the Shield and Key, is a member of the National Honor Society, has received the Superintendent Scholarship for $175, and will be attending Lehigh University in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania in the fall. Shamir Desai. 
Shamir has been also awarded the Shield and Key and is a member of our National Honor Society and will be attending Boston College. Lisa Dickinson is the secretary of our National Honor Society this year, has received a Johnson & Wales scholarship for $6,000, the SAR Johnson & Wales scholarship for $3,600, is also recipient of the gar guaranteed student loan for $10,000, will be attending Johnson & Johnson & Wales College in the fall. <laughs> Kim Davison is a recipient of the Shield and Key. Patricia Patricia Diard Eduardo uh, is a recipient of the tuition aid grant for $2,800 and a guaranteed student loan for $10,000 and will be attending Rutgers in the fall. <laughs> Elaine Drager. Elaine Drager received the English Department Award, the Mathematics Department Award, the Advanced Biology Award, <laughs> received the Shield and Key, is a member of our National Honor Society, she also received the Bausch and Lomb Award for Outstanding Achievement in Science and Mathematics. She was a, a recipient of the following scholarships. The Freehold Rotary Club for $750, the PTSO for $200, the Aid Association for Lutheran All-College Scholarship for $2,000, the Garden State Distinguished Scholar Award for $4,000, the Rotary Club Scholarship for $750, the James Way Valedictorian Scholarship for $100, and we'll be attending Lehigh University in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania in the fall. <laughs> Lisa Furco. Lisa also was awarded the Shield and Key, is a member of our National Honor Society, received the Rutgers grant for $7,500, and the Rutgers loan for $1,400, will be attending Rutgers University. Robin Ferrandino. Robin will be attending Brookdale Community College. Benji Forentino. Benji will be attending East Stroudsburg University. Rebecca Fishman. Rebecca was awarded the Shield and Key and will be attending Yeshiva University. Jeffrey Foster. Jeffrey, Jeffrey received an award from the United Black Families of Freehold Township for $4,000. <coughs> he was also awarded the Francesco A. Gutsman Award for $2,000 and will be attending North Carolina Agriculture and Technical College, pardon me, State University in North Carolina. <laughs> Kelly Friedman. Kelly will be attending the University of Delaware. Gregory Friend. Gregory will be attending Hofstra University. Mara Gibson, Mara was awarded the Art Award, will be attending Trenton State College in the fall. <laughs> Denise Glatzer, Denise received the Health Department Award, which also is a recipient of the Pell Grant for $2,000, the Educational Opportunity Fund Grant for $6,700, will be attending Stockton State College. <laughs> Beverly Glover, Beverly will be attending Brookdale Community College. Michael Goldberg. Michael is a recipient of the Shield and Key, is a member of the National Honor Society. He qualified for the guaranteed student loan for $10,000, will be attending Georgia Tech. Yeah. Naomi Goldinger. Naomi is a has been awarded the Shield and Key, is a member of the National Honor Society, is a recipient of the Garden State Distinguished Scholar Award for $430, the Rutgers loan for $1,400, and a guaranteed student loan for $10,000 will be attending Rutgers University. <laughs> Suzanne Granza will be attending Brookdale Community College. <laughs> Debbie Grom. Debbie Grom has been accepted to St. Francis College, pardon me, St. Francis School of Nursing in Trenton. <laughs> Cynthia Hare will be attending University of Hartford in Connecticut. <laughs> Ramonda Hickman. My Ramonda will be... Ramonda will be attending the Berkeley uh, Business School. Money, money. Jeffrey Holtz. Jeffrey will be attending Brookdale Community College. <laughs> Keith Hipsch. Keith will be attending Brookdale Community College. <laughs> Amy Jackson. Amy Jackson will be attending Brookdale Community College uh, in the fall. Alan, Alan Cap. Alan Cap was the recipient of the Resource Department Award, the Home Economics Department Award, and has been awarded the Outstanding Achievement in Personal Growth and Leadership by the, the faculty of Freehold High School. 
Cheryl Kaufman. Cheryl Kaufman will be attending Glassboro State College. Kimberly Kelly. Kim Kelly will be attending Harcum Junior College in Pennsylvania and receive the Harcum Grant for $1,000. Richard Kelsey will be attending Brookdale Community College. Chong Lai will be attending Brookdale Community College. Sue Lee Lai will also be attending Brookdale Community College. Debbie Lachine. Debbie Lachine will be attending Glassboro State College. Cindy Lasky. Cindy was awarded the Business Department Award. Uh, will be attending Glassboro State College. And this year, Olympia Typewriting Company had a competition, uh, a national competition. We're very proud to say that Cindy won number one in New Jersey uh, in this typing uh, contest and also the first runner-up in the United States. <laughs> Donna Lewis. Donna will be attending Brookdale Community College. Nancy Lithgow. Nancy will be, at Nancy will be attending Brookdale Community College. Sandra Lopez. Sandra was awarded the Technical Theater Award and will be attending Brookdale Community College. Ron Lauk. Ron will be attending DeVry Institute, Technical Institute. He research, received or is a recipient of the guaranteed student loan for $5,000. Uh, Chuck Luchow. Chuck will be attending the Union Technical Institute in the fall. Dave Luongo. Dave will be attending Brookdale Community College in the fall. And yes, Dave, we will miss you. <laughs> Sue McElwain. Sue will be attending Ryder College in the fall. Krista McGacken. Krista was awarded the Physical Education Department Award and will be attending Rutgers in the fall. Denise Murkowski. Denise is a member of the National Honor Society and will be attending Ryder College. Russell Miller. Russell was also awarded the Shield and Key and will be attending Montclair State College. Stephanie Murray. Stephanie will be attending Stephanie will be attending Brookdale in the fall. Barbara Nelson. Barbara was uh, uh, selected to attend Rutgers College of Engineering in the fall. Matt Nelson. Matt will be attending Trenton State College. Eric Nemeth. Eric will be attending York College of Pennsylvania. Hao Huen. Hao is a recipient of the Pell Grant for $3,000, the New Jersey Basic Scholarship for $4,000, and will be attending college, Rutgers College of Engineering. <laughs> Kathleen O'Brien. Kathy was awarded the English Department Award, is a recipient of the Shield and Key, is our Vice President of the National Honor Society. Uh, she's also the recipient of the Freehold Regional High School District Principals Associ Scholarship for $175. The PTSO scholarship for $200. We'll be attending Duke University in Durham, North Carolina. <laughs> Neil Oxman. Neil will be attending Glassboro State College. Georgiana Papa Nicholas. Georgiana has been accepted to Tourist School of Rhodes in Greece. <laughs> Sylvia Perez. Sylvia will, be at, Sylvia will be attending Brookdale Community College. Elaine Peretz. Elaine will be attending Trenton State College. Doug Plyer. Doug will be attending Johnson & Wales. He is also a recipient of the academic scholarship from Johnson & Wales for $4,000.